Ah. Ah. 999,000. Opinions unqualified. Live on location in Nixie's gym. Welcome, boys. Uh, very nice introduction there by Nixie. Sean. Uh, Sean Turn is here. How are you doing? I'm doing well, mate. How are you? Uh, I'm very good. Very good. Um, different. Usually we record on um, Monday nights. It's a, it's a Tuesday. Um, we're all, all done with our daily business and we're, we've uh, congregated uh, once again at Nixie's gym. Um, so if you hear if you hear any uh, noises in the background or anything like that, that's just Nixie getting in that work. There's a lot of testosterone going on <laughs> in this room right now. Um, another thing that's very exciting um, is that hopefully, right now listening to us, we are coming from the middle or together instead of left and right. Um, so let us know what you think. Um, and hopefully it is working because otherwise right now we're recording and um, it would suck if we got 45 minutes through and then listened again and um, it didn't work. Yeah, I mean, we did some quick test runs beforehand with our, you know, IT support group and uh, it was looking pretty good. I'm feeling positive about it, but I guess we'll wait until we hear the review from the fans. Exactly. Um, so make sure when you do listen to it, Give us some feedback on the sound because um, obviously we are always uh, trying to improve and, and I think we are almost there at getting our sound um, perfect. Um, we are at podcast, this will be podcast 29, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, you know, at least we've finally gotten to a stage where we can almost say that we are, um, we've got our sound where we want it to be. That's right. I mean, 29 podcasts, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, mate, you know. Good sound quality takes a bit of work. Um, so, Sam, how was your weekend? What would you get up to? Um, yeah, so as, as you know, I probably did say uh, before on the on the podcast that I, I'm not... Um, Liar. Not drinking, Liar. <laughs> not drinking for four weeks. Um, <laughs> and, and that came to a, a stunning halt at... Um, Week three, the end of week three. Um, got some news to go out for dinner um, and watch the uh, Death by Denim gig. And I thought it was too good of an opportunity. Um, some would say you don't need a drink to have fun. But when it's your mate's biannual um, event to uh, actually go out and whatnot, you know, I thought I had to, I had to be in some good form. Yep. Um, and then I thought, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try out the body armour before I um, give it to the other guinea pigs this coming week. Okay, so give us a rundown of how the body armor worked. How did that so, go? Um, we were very excited about that the other day. Yeah, so it is um, best served chilled, mm -hmm. which um, I can see why. Uh, the taste is not the, the greatest thing on earth. Yep. Um, so, but it, it is a lot easier when you're drinking it knowing that hopefully it's going to help you. Yep. Uh, you wouldn't drink it just because it tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and obviously I, I probably didn't drink as much as I usually do on a, on a on a week end night. Yep. Um, so that's also that came into effect. Um, so drunk it well, well Sunday morning, woke up fresh, uh, came home a bit earlier than I usually do as well. Yep. Um, so I got home early. I probably drank a bit less, um, but I woke up no no uh, no headache, nothing like that. No um no like sauce, you know the uh, wheezy, queasy, queasy stomach. Queasy feeling, yep. Um, you know, a bit tired, but it doesn't um say that it's going to cure your tiredness. You know, that's at the part end of the day, if you stay up late and you're out and about, you're still going to be tired. Exactly. Yep. So um, yeah. So I think. For, for last weekend, it was um, successful. Yep. Um, and that was like the, the pre-test. Mm -hmm. uh, and this coming week will be the, um, the one where the uh, Opinions Unqualified fans uh, will see us putting it to the real test on, um, on the Instagram story, I guess. Awesome. I mean, the scientist in me says, you know, we need multiple trials when we're testing something out, right? Exactly. You know, this is one 
one trial, but we need multiple others to see if it really does do what it says it does. But, you know, trial one, success. success. So, that's a pretty good sign. It's a pretty good sign. I mean, Sammy. yes. What I wanted to talk to you about is, because yes. you said you went out to dinner and you don't need to drink to have fun. Yeah. Is it possible to go out to dinner, say with friends or a girl, and not have a drink? Yes, it is. Um, I disagree. Really? Yep. Wow. If I'm out on a date, I have to have a drink. It settles the nerves, makes me feel sociable, makes me look sociable. I struggle. I don't think I can go out and not have a drink. I don't have to get yeah. drunk, but yeah, I like to have a drink. Just a beer, at least. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I'm quite good. Just um, Although, where we did go, side door barbecue. Has yeah. anyone been there? Never even heard of it. Um, Mount Lawley or Mount something. Yeah. Um, somewhere. Somewhere. Um, American barbecue. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. I wouldn't say it's the greatest thing on earth, but if you want to get your, your American food fix... What, um, kind of, what kind of barbecue do they have? Everything. Everything? Um, bris- brisket, ribs, um, mac and cheese, um, cornbread. Oh, um, I think cornbread's my favourite part. Everything, yeah. yeah. They got fried chicken there. All, yeah. It was good. Pretty yeah. good. So I do um, yeah, side door barbecue. I think mm-hmm. that's what it's called. Um, I might have to check that out. Check it out. Uh, not too bad. Like any, like any barbecue place. Not the cheapest, yeah. but it's not too expensive either. I so. did the job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had their um, sweet tea with some spiced rum. Is um, that terrible? It was good, but <laughs> um, no, it was very good. But there was uh, yeah, a lot of sugar involved. Um, and I, I ordered a jug with someone else, and I think they got sick of it after about two glasses, and then too I was sweet? yeah, too sweet. And then I was like, well. Someone's got to finish it, so I um, I probably had the rest, um, and I think I paid for for it with uh, the amount of sugar. I think I hated all sweet teas and iced teas and that in America. Eh? I didn't like any of them. Love they sweet all, tea. To me, they all tasted like they had like that Splendor type sugar in it, like fake sugar. That's yeah. what it tasted to me. I was not a fan. Uh, I I really enjoy sweet tea. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed it. I'd always get it. That or Dr. Pepper would be the... Well, talking about beverages... Yes. So, Sam, you were talking to me about coffee orders the other day. Did you want to dive into that for me? Yeah, well, um, well we uh, had to meet here at a certain time and um, there was no point in me um, going home or anything like that, so I had to do something. Yep. Uh, so I thought I'd, I'd grab a grab a beverage... Ooh, beverage. Mm, um, beverage. So, and, and you know, when I get a coffee, I my my go to order is a ice latte. Doesn't yep. matter the weather, cold, yep. hot. I always get an ice latte. It's just um, your go to. Yep. It's just me. It's just a hundred percent me. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was just wondering what what everyone else's coffee orders may be. You know. Um, flat white, no sugar, as large as possible. I feel, flat white's like the the mature coffee order mm, yeah. for, for a mature man who busts his butt in the gym <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean uh, for me I think I think it depends like I'll, I'll get cappuccinos I'll get lattes I'll get iced lattes sometimes I'll even get a frappe you well, know frappe, yeah, yeah. Fra- <laughs> <laughs> frappe doesn't count does hey there's coffee frappes that's, that's coffee true. that is true um, yeah it depends on the mood for me um, oh. I would say I'm kind of like you. It doesn't matter. Like it's not like I have to have an iced latte in the summer. I would get one, even if it's a freezing day. Yeah. It just depends on do I want an iced latte? Yes. I'm yeah. gonna get it. I don't care about the weather. Yeah. Um, with that, does the amount of ice? Do you prefer like a certain amount of ice with your iced latte? Um, it doesn't really bother me too it's much. Watery. Doesn't mm. bother me too much. But if you are if you are nursing it a bit. It does tend to get very watery at the end, which yep. is which is a downside. Um, but just drink it a little bit quicker, and you're alright. Yeah, you know, exactly. Have you ever had um, like the uh, the dome, you know, like the the fluffy koalas and stuff like that? The um, oh yeah. Uh, what's it? Oh, what's the other one? The crunchy one. You know, it's just like yeah. a shot of a shot of coffee. And then milk, like whipped milk, cream, and, and then, then like the ice, crunchy bits, crushed in. ice, and then the yeah. chocolate on top. Do you rate those? 
When I was younger, yes. I had one about a year ago. I've lost interest. Lost interest. I've lost interest yeah. in it. It's been, it's been a while since I've been a dome, but um, I do tend I, I do tend to to grab one of those when I do go mm. to the dome. Do you know what is quite good? The domes are affogato. Affogato. Hmm. So a hot coffee yeah, with, with a dob of ice cream in it. Oh yeah. Yeah. See, you know what my It's naughty. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I um I used to always get the uh, one litre Harvey Fresh Avogado. I it's, actually remember this. Well, you, you would remember that, yep. yeah. Um, some would say that I had a, a, a mild addiction to uh, <laughs> litre Harvey Fresh Avogados. I think this man used to have about two a week. <laughs> yeah, I, um, yeah, look, I did enjoy them. Um, still the worst decision ever by Harvey Fresh to get rid of them. I think yep. it's been about seven years since I got rid of them and I'm still just as upset today. Um mm-hmm. But the thing is, when I first found out about the, the one liter affogados, and I'm drinking this, I'm like, this is so good, you know, mm-hmm. like this is amazing. And then I'm pretty sure one time I was like at a cafe or something, and I was like, oh, affogado, like I drink, I drink one liter of this a day. And like, then you got the actual hot coffee one. And I, yeah, it was like a shot of coffee with the ice cream, and I was like, oh, nice, cool. <laughs> like, so this is what it's yeah, meant to be. Yeah. I was like, I'll take the uh, one litre affogato, please. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean. Um, my dad used to actually drink straight condensed milk quite a oh. lot. What do you think of that? Have you ever condensed. had that? Is that like the flavoured? It's You get it in like the little, like, sometimes like little cans and that, and it's like condensed milk, so like it's really sweet. You usually use it in cooking and stuff. Oh, yeah, no, I haven't. Oh, mate. One, um... It's good. <laughs> The first time I went to America, you know the um how they have like the um the flavor, mm-hmm. the um cr- cream. What do they call it? Cream flavor or something like that. Half and half. No, 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 no like oh. creamy soda. Cream soda. No, 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 coffee. But like it's flavored. Flavored coffee. Like to put the flavor into the coffee. You know how like you have like you can add like hazelnut flavor. Creamer. Or whatever? Yeah, creamer. That's yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, obviously, back then I, I really enjoyed flavored milk. Yeah. And um, we'd been in America for a while, hadn't found any flavored milk, and I was like, "Man, needs some flavored milk, yep. you know? Like, I just He's like I just want some flavored milk." And anyway, we went to I don't know Walmart or whatever um, shop that we went to, and I was like, "I have to get some flavored milk," mm-hmm. and I couldn't find anything. And I was like, "Oh man, this sucks." And then I found this this section of the fridge, and I was like, "Oh, finally some flavored oh, milk." Oh, you didn't, right? So I ended up grabbing it and I was like, I was like, yeah, got this and I like, got back in the bus and I was like, sweet, I finally got my flavoured milk and like I started drinking and I was like, holy crap, this is sweet. <laughs> I was like, typical Americans making everything way sweeter than it needs to be. Anyway, long story short, a while after I like, I don't know whether I finished it, but someone's like, you're supposed to add that to coffee to like flavour it and I was like, oh, right. <laughs> Oh my Misunderstood, goodness. but yeah. Good times. Uh, mate, I've like... I can't even imagine how sweet that would have been. Because I used to use like the hazelnut one. The yeah. hazelnut creamer yeah. all the time. And because I was the same as you, like I missed a bit of flavoured milk. So I just poured a glass of milk. So not coffee. And yeah. added some hazelnut creamer to it to give it like that flavour. Yeah. And that was pretty average, but that was sweet alone. Let alone yeah, just drinking straight. just the creamer straight. <laughs> if you finish that... Son, you got yeah. issues. I do, I do. <laughs> but yeah. Talk, talking about sugar anyway, and we're on the coffee coffee talk. Yep. Um, Sean Turner, you, you've got your Barista Bros um, iced coffee here. I do. Um, and and you're saying that you you like iced lattes. I like ice ice lattes, and I think everyone likes iced lattes. Um, do you prefer like ice latte from a from a cafe, or like a bottle from like a from a shop. So, I would say before I went to the states, I preferred the bottled stuff. Yeah, I liked how it was very milky, very sweet, and I just loved it. Yeah, and I was very similar to you. I used to always get the affogatos or like the big, massive one liter iced coffees and stuff all the time. Yeah, I think going to the states where their iced coffees is literally water and ice, like with their coffee, and then you add creamer to it. 
kind of made me get used to that was in yeah pennsylvania yeah. how it was done anyway yeah right um, <laughs> that kind of made me appreciate iced coffees with less milk because it made my stomach feel better yeah yeah so now i kind of lean towards cafe iced lattes and stuff a bit more because they're not as milky yeah um but that's mainly not even because of taste just because of how it makes my stomach feel yeah, yeah. I, I um i used to obviously like the um the bottled stuff from the shops mm. um and there is copious amounts of sugar in each um bottle um and uh but ever since i kind of got to um the found out about ice lattes mm-hmm. I, I definitely lean towards an ice latte and it's like you know do i want a bottled drink or do i want to get an ice latte you can taste the quality of it and i'd say i'd say yeah. nine out of ten times i'd say get me an ice latte you know i'm, I'm just gonna throw this out there nixie i feel like you're not much of an ice latte man no, nah, not really. No, no. <laughs> I'd go uh, one of those, you know, old school Browns iced coffees. Mm, yeah. You know, like the proper ones. Yeah. Oh, the Browns ones, yeah. 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 I don't like the other ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah. Ice lattes are the bomb, I reckon, but, you know, that's all right. Each to their own. Each to their own. I Each struggle to even say latte. Yeah, it's flat uh, white or just coffee, mate. Yeah. Coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. The testosterone in me. Yeah. Yep. Now that's a man right there, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, good one. Good one. Sean, sure, right. you're killing us here. I know, man. killing us, right? One job. One job. That's it, mate. That's it. Okay. So, moving on to this next topic that we wanted to, to discuss today. So, when you've done a lot of hard work or put a lot of effort into a particular task or some sort of assignment or anything that you're putting your mind to for a longer period of time, what kind of reward do you give yourself? So Sam, for example, right now, I know you've been working hard for the last few weeks with your prac placement. Um, You're about to be done. So what, what would you give yourself as a reward for all the hard work that you've been doing? Um, Well, my my motivation, my mm-hmm. uh, external yep. motivation, um, has definitely been that uh, the, the night out with the boys. Yeah. Um, which has been yeah is um, definitely something that I'm looking forward to, and it, it, it's good every day kind of knowing um, that that night is on the horizon. Mm-hmm. It's very close, um, and it, and it pushes me. You know that one foot in front of the other to get me get yep. me through the day um and then i'll probably um buy myself some i say i think i'm gonna buy some more um nba cards yep um and then um that's probably it for now but you know i might buy myself something else i like it i like it what about you have you got what's your have you got kind of like a, a stock standard thing or you change um, it yeah i guess my my stock standard thing would be Probably a night out, something mm-hmm. with the boys, or even just go, yep, I'm going to go drinking this night or something like that. Yeah. But if it's nothing related to that, it would probably, because I'm a bit of a gamer, probably buy myself a new PlayStation game yeah. and anything I want. So if it's just come out and it's 90 bucks, I'll buy it. It doesn't matter. It. If I've earned it, I'll go, yep, that's what I'm getting. I don't feel guilty. Um, yeah, that's probably me right there. Uh, Nixie, what kind of reward would you give yourself? Um, well, I'm back, so that's good. Yep. Um, for me, I probably, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's probably, yeah, giving myself some time with some friends or, or family. I think that's probably the biggest reward. Um, I don't know. And then finding the finding a way to celebrate the achievement. So I feel like it's something fairly significant. Just finding a way to, to celebrate that with people I care about. Yep. Yeah. I'm not really into buying things. Yeah, no, really. Yeah. I don't because when you get old or older, mm-hmm. you got most of the things you need anyway. So you don't need. Yeah, it's, it's more the experience, more the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. I'll tell you what, I'm excited to get some basketball cards though. Um, Have yeah. any luck with any of the ones you bought yet? Nah, my, my <laughs> highest value card's about five dollars. Um, but you know, like it's uh, it's it's fun. Well, I think um, it's with basketball cards. It's what they'll be worth in the future. 
Mm-hmm. So like you get some cards now. You pull a rookie card of of someone that comes through, and then in ten years they end up being a top five That's, player. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a it's an investment for the future. That's the thing, and it, it's it's, yeah. it's fun just opening them up, um, seeing what you get. The, yeah, the it's, all, it's the excitement of opening it, isn't um, it? Yeah, the different the different kind of cards you get. Um, some of them are cool. Like you get jersey patches mm-hmm. um, from like game worn jerseys, which are pretty cool. Um, and then it, it, I just because obviously. Um, NBA 2K yeah. has got a, a a game mode called My Team, yeah. which is pretty much just the similar thing, yeah. The game game version of card collecting, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, is that a new game comes out every year, yeah. right? So you, you people, kids, people spend money on these packs to have these cards for a year, and then even like the cards that you get early on. You don't use them anymore, but then after that year, you don't have those cards anymore. They just disappear. That's just in the last game, and then you, you got to buy more packs to get new cards again. It's a great money making um, business, let me yeah, say. Yeah, <laughs> it is great. But um, yeah, you know, when you open up the real life packs, mm-hmm. um, you've got those cards there for forever, really. Yeah. You know, so which I think is pretty cool. I agree. But um, yeah, and you can frame them and put them in your shed. Exactly. Yeah, that's that might be the um, the job uh, very soon actually because mm-hmm. they're ready to be um, put back up. I've uh, changed my, my my cards, new favourites. But, um, so we're talking about this uh, reward night that we're going to have. Yeah. What is your perfect itinerary, Mister Sam? Um, well, you know my perfect itinerary, and you've gone absolutely against the grain with your suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah. Um, but you know, luckily. Um, I'm happy as long as that um, we're going out and having a good time. We can have a good time anywhere. It doesn't really matter. But, um, yeah, look, it's hard to look past some Long Island iced teas at Brass Monkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um, that's, that's completely honest. Um, but obviously we're going somewhere else. Um, but that doesn't mean that maybe we can have a quick stop at Brass Monkey. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Where are we going? I actually don't. Know. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you never show up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fresh out. Yeah. yeah. You are. You're going where we tell you to go. Yeah. Yeah, you got no choice. That. I respect that. Do you guys need me to carry anything yeah. for you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're all right. Um, so actually, I wanted to talk about something that's not on our little list, but uh, on the weekend, um, the WNBL all congregated in Queensland. Yeah. Um, and they're having a a season of. 30, basically 30 days and 14, 14 games in 30 days. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty in, insane. Yeah. Um, obviously, our local team, the Perth Lynx, uh, are there. So firstly, I just want to wish a couple of my players, Nashea Williams and Kayla Steindl, um, mm-hmm. some luck over there. Hopefully, they do really, really well. Um, but what do you think about playing 14 games in 30 days? It would be tough, but I reckon it would be sick as well. I mm-hmm. reckon it would be good fun. It's like a... Remember when state champs used to be like... The thing when you're like yep. 12 or 13, like yep. Yep. state champs, just like that whole weekend, um, like it would be pretty cool. Like you just smash out a season in, in a month. Like there's not not much training happening, but yeah, uh, yeah. like just play games. It's kind of nice. Yeah. yeah, play games, hang out with your teammates. Like yeah. I think it'd be pretty cool. Something different, good experience. So do you think in that sort of environment, because you don't have time to train? And you've got some review time, so you can get on. But mm-hmm. like you're playing a game every two days, a b- bunch of double headers. Yeah. Um, how do you like? It's the most talented team that wins that, surely. The deepest, yep. most talented team. Like it's not about coaching. It's not about any of that. It's whoever's got the most talent. Would do you agree or not? Not always. And I'm a it coach. De- it depends. So. I feel like it depends how much work they are still putting off the court. Because like you could easily go. Oh yeah, we're playing, we're playing, and we're not going to do anything at all at training. But if you've got a coach that's insane and wants to go and do scouting every every game and go over scouting report every single day, and I don't know, just put in all that extra work, then I guess that could also have an impact. Um, but do you think like you're going to burn your players out? Like you got a game? Oh yeah, it review, could just burn you out. Yeah. Game review. It's just like. It'd be like, you know, um, Groundhog Day. Great movie, by the way. Every oh, day is exa- exactly the same, yeah, every yeah. day. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's also going to be kind of the team that's, that can stay focused for those, those 30 days. Mm. Like, it'd be very, I think it'd be 
pretty easy to to go to not be focused in that environment Mm -hmm. like you can go one or two ways you know some people might thrive in that environment like that's what they're born like just basketball 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 and then some others might go crazy because it's basketball 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 you know yeah i was gonna say so you know how certain people if they get a loss they can't let it go for the next day or two afterwards yeah do you think if you lose in that situation is that going to have a much bigger impact do you reckon you could change some losses really quickly if you're playing that often yeah possibly i was i was actually thinking that you could get over a loss quicker but Mm. if you you have loss after loss after loss Mm. that could be even worse you know you could just go ah this isn't working and just kind of give up for the whole 30 days hey yeah i just yeah it's it's actually yeah you want to get a good start if you don't get a good start you're in trouble yeah and Mm. it's just yeah it's probably not the best environment either if you you start getting on a losing run well yeah because you got no you know like there's no no, escape yeah no no, like where are you going (laughs) Uh, let's hang out with more of my teammates that are probably sad as well (laughs) that we're losing like this great, is depressing. Great, yeah, great team around. Anyone want to play Uno? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want to lose again. <laughs> That's it, man. And then you lose your Uno again. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I thought that was interesting. Um, obviously, the other big sport thing that's happening at the moment uh, is uh, the AFL trade period's open. And I'll be 100% honest with you, I haven't seen a thing. I've been too busy. But I feel like because the season's sort of just finished and... Like I, I'm not seeing as much interest or as much news on that as as I have in the past. I, I feel like the AFL maybe maybe should have had a gap. Um, yeah, I don't really keep up with football, so I, I mm. um I don't have much I- idea really. Mm. Um, I have seen like every once in a while something pops up, like someone might be going there, mm. but it's not like I I take massive mm. interest or or notice of what's going on with football. I literally see nothing. I must look up absolutely no AFL whatsoever. I don't even get any ads pop up for it. Nothing. I haven't heard <laughs> anything about it in forever. Uh, that's, that's probably good for you. Yeah. Um, actually, and the last thing, last thing on sport, um, the SBL has been rebranded to NBL One. It's, yeah. it's official. Um, so I just think that probably impacts a little bit to, to some of the people that, that listen. Um, but what I'd just sort of like to reiterate is probably just a sticker at this point in time the same people run the league the same teams are in the league um so I, I don't expect other than the fact we might be able to recruit different players because of the nbl badge mm-hmm. um it's going to be pretty pretty similar i'd imagine i mean i'm wondering how it impacts some of the f- some fans like do you reckon it'll actually get more fans to come I don't I've, point, yeah from what i've heard from just like students at school they're like sir have you heard it's now nbl one like it's a bigger league now we got to go watch it. Like, sir, it's NBL 1. Oh, really? That's what the students are saying. Wow. I, th- I think you might get just, well, probably just like every um, start of the season where it's like, oh, let's go check out a game to see if there's anyone new, like what the new imports are like mm-hmm. or something like that. So I think you'll get the same thing of a lot of people might be like, oh, it's NBL 1 West now. Let's let's go check it out, see what's about. And then they go watch a few games and be like, mm-hmm. oh, all right, like, yeah, Sam K- Curtis is still playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I, I think it might because of the branding, like yeah. attract different sponsors and obviously different players and, and obviously from the sound of what you're saying, mm-hmm. some more people. But I can't imagine, particularly with the fact that like, when are imports, when are people going to be able to travel from America? That's you know? true. Yeah. Um, like, you know, that's so, been messed up for a while now, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, so I think the standard will be similar to what it was this year. To be honest, so um, yeah. Short turnarounds, and I know it's more sport, and we really we don't uh, we don't do a lot of sport brand on the ourselves. Show. As, yeah. So why not? Let's just yeah. smash it out all in one, and yeah. then um, <laughs> you won't hear about it for another six months. The WWE. <laughs> yeah. um, no, the, that's something to watch. The, the um, NBA's got their um, proposed start date as well, December twenty second, mm. um, which is a very short turnaround. Because so it's November tenth now. They've still got to get free agency and they've still got to get the draft in and training camp. And a country that's still COVID bloody riddled. Yes. Like, um, are they going to have multiple hubs? What are they going uh, to do? No idea what they're doing, but yeah. they've, um, yeah, they've proposed, well, December 22, they've pretty much locked it in yeah, as the well. start date. Um, that will be impressive if they pull that off. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Um, and I think 72 game season, not 82. Yeah, 72 game, game yeah. season. Um, yeah. 
But the, yeah, the main thing was because I think the players wanted to start in in January. Yeah. Um, but the the league wanted to start in December, just so they can get that extra month of revenue. Obviously, because they're already behind the eight ball with um, players' contracts and stuff like that. So they were really pushing for um, yeah. the earlier start. But yeah, it'll be be uh, interesting to see what happens. Really, like rookies won't get like much of a training camp. They'll just be. Like I don't. Is there going to be a summer league? Like I don't think there'll be a summer league. Like it's just no, nah, no. Nah. Like you're just going to get thrown in the deep end, really. Like I wonder if rookies will have a tougher transition this year then. Well, I'm thinking rookie might be better for rookies to be honest, because yeah. they're if they're in a hub type situation, they're living and breathing basketball. There's none of that external. You know, he's a rookie. Um, he's going out in the town. He's getting treated like a god. They can't go out. They have mm. to focus on basketball. So it could actually be a real positive. Yeah. Um, but it, it can be all-consuming as it is, and they'll just need to find ways to, to keep themselves sort of focused on the prize, but not 100% of the time. Yeah. yeah. I think it'll, um, it'll probably be good for the older rookies as well, because some teams might be like, oh, there's not much training camp or anything like that. We might need to um, get ourselves a rookie that's a little bit older that maybe you know is a little bit more ready just to plug in for a few minutes to play straight away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. S- staying in America... Yeah. I... Um, I heard that Donald Trump yep. said that if he loses the election, he will leave the US forever. And that Joe said Biden. <laughs> I did say that. That was, pretty, <laughs> that, was pretty, that was pretty good. Yeah. I respect that a lot. Yeah. Where, where's he going? Yeah, I don't know. Probably heard, not not, not Mexico. Yeah. Definitely not Mexico. No, I've heard he's still chucking up a fuss like about all the votes and that. I think he's still fighting it even now. Didn't he cheat to win the first time with like Russian, like rigging the the election with Russian t- technology or something? Sounds right. Yeah. So. But now he's complaining about other people cheating this time. Yeah. Yeah. Which I know there was cases where people had technically done the wrong thing. Yeah. Like I think, what was it? One state had a bunch of votes, and they were all done by people who are currently dead. Really? Yep. <laughs> So that was interesting. Uh, yeah, my buddy was on the phone to me from America the other day, like telling me all that stuff, and I had no idea about it. Wow. So that's pretty messed up. I didn't know zombies. Well, because COVID is pretty much like a like an apocalypse. I didn't it, know it is zombies could vote. <laughs> they <laughs> like, might they might have changed their laws on that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But, Be more inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, if he, I mean, Trump's probably got his own private island anyway, doesn't he? So that's like. Well, he's got a. a hotel chain yeah, like, it's, it's not like he's not going to have yeah, somewhere to stay like, yeah, so mate you saved your time have a holiday <laughs> you've got the take, money to do it take, take the holiday break. take a break I take wouldn't care yeah. well, I wonder like because someone like him who's obviously like a multi-billionaire like he's he's extremely mm-hmm. wealthy yeah like presidents have like a uh, uh, what is it called a pension for yeah. the rest of the rest of their life so they get paid like 250 I don't know how much it is but it's a lot of money yeah. like $250,000 a year or something for the rest of their life until till they die really yeah, yeah. Um, because they serve for serve their country so that's what they you know and it's probably the highest pressure job on earth mm-hmm. um, but does he take that like if you really are about your country and you've got that much money do you take that I don't no. know <laughs> no but they will <laughs> Like, I still would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just I don't need it. Like I love my country. Yeah. I led my country. I don't need this money. You keep the money and invest it. Really it doesn't. Yeah. Or invest. Say every year I'd invest that into I don't know poverty stricken areas in the country and give them education or, or something. You know. But you maybe know. a good healthcare system. Yeah. You know. Maybe a healthcare. Yeah, system. A healthcare <laughs> system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not that he, that that cell is going to fix America's health problems, but you know, no. you're contributing to something that's you know actually going to help the country move forward or if you're out there listening uh donald uh you know podcast <laughs> opinions on qualified could use two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, you, you, you could invest in in the pod uh, yeah, well, we don't even need that just give us like one yeah. percent yeah. we're not even we're not anti-trump at all yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we, we respect you <laughs> yeah, we respect your money so, <laughs> um yeah so i just i think it's interesting to see the way that that country is going more than anything else and look without being educated because our our podcast is about being unqualified 
I'm not ex- exactly sure how much better Biden's going to be looking at uh, at some of the conversations mm-hmm. I've seen on the news and, and different things. But, you know, I guess, you know, is it better the devil you know? Or is it, you know, we've got to try something new because this devil is pretty damn bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who knows? Um, but it is interesting because obviously with all this stuff going on mm-hmm. and people are talking about it. And to be honest with you, I really dislike talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I understand the importance of it, but it's like at the same time, there's not much that we can do about it. Um, yeah. So, you know, you can pay attention to it, but like when it dominates conversation, it annoys me a bit because I'm just like, oh, like, let's talk about something happy or something, you know. Well, mm-hmm. It depends on your perspective. If yeah. you're Joe Biden, it's a pretty happy subject. Well, yeah, <laughs> that is true. But um, like I'm hearing a lot of people like, oh, I'm never going to go to America now mm. anymore because it's crazy over there or whatever. Um, me personally, I'm like, well, I'd probably go back there, you know, like. For a holiday, I would one hundred percent go back. Um, this changes nothing for me. Yeah, yeah, and I'm the same. Yeah, yeah, so and I found it really interesting, and it's um, kind of leads into taking risks, I guess. Um, you know, people say that I don't want to go back. To, I would never go back to America, uh, but then they cross the road straight after they say that sentence, which really is also taking a risk without looking both ways. Without looking yeah. both ways. But is it more dangerous to cross the road? Here, after saying it, or across the road in America, <laughs> that's the question. That's, yeah, but I mean, you know, and then where where else are you going to go on your holiday if you're not going to America? You're going to fly somewhere else, so you're taking. I'm a telling risk you now, we're from somewhere. we're from Perth. We're going to Bali. Let's yeah. be honest. I would rather I'd feel safer in America than Bali. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. like I don't know. I just think there's a lot of things, calculated risks. You know, mm. just relax. Take, so come, how, come how do we? Everything. How do we calculate the risk, though? That's the thing. Like, if you're talking about traveling to a country as wide and as diverse and as America, how can you calculate that risk? Like, do you put a risk management plan in to say, look, I can only go to these certain areas, or do you, like, yeah. how do you cal- how do you calculate the risk? Yeah, I think you you have a look and you see, you know, like suss out a place that you want to go, and then if you like, check it out, see what it's like, you know, how the yep. how it's going there. If you were, say you were a 70 year old, does your opinion change about going to America right now? Oh, it depends. I mm. think, like, do you know people there? Well, it's considering what COVID is and how it affects people that are older. I wouldn't go. If I was that old, I wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good, yeah. Um, well, cruise, cruising is what they do, bro. Yeah. 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 But, um, I mean, it's more when COVID's kind of. Over. Over. Oh, over. Well, then um, there's, oh, it's America's America again. So Yeah, yeah but yeah, there's, you know, there's guns in pockets. and there's, yeah. yeah. But there's people there's, like... You just yeah. do your research, know which areas to avoid, and that's it. Yeah. There's people like dead set, like, I'll never go, like, I won't go back there. Do you really? know, do you know yeah. why that is, though? Because peop- it's a lot of people, a lot of people I know of saying that haven't actually been there. So they all they see about, like, America and even some other countries is all the negative media. Yeah. yeah. It's like... You're only seeing all the negatives. You've never actually been there. You don't know what it's like. Well, there's a lot of good people there. Oh, yeah, just absolutely. Like, just like there is here. It's just their media is insane. Yeah. Well, mm. that's, they that, over-dramatise everything. That's what they do. That's, yeah. That's why I don't understand. Yeah. You know? And I think, I think with media, like it's, it's driven by whoever, whoever's opinion is in control of what we're seeing. So yep. it's like, like the whole propaganda thing in China. I don't know if we've discussed this before, but... We, we might have discussed it before, but um, where the Chinese government years and years and years ago used to show pictures of the American slums yep. and say to their people that the Americans are poor, we need to contribute money to save these poor American kids, and then the government would take that money and put it into their military. <laughs> so all of these people in China, and then when they opened up to Western society, these Americans came, and I heard this from a Chinese person, these Americans came... And they're like, oh, how can you afford to come to China? Like, how can you afford to get here? Like, you guys are poor. Like, yeah. we contribute money to you guys. And like, no, we're actually the richest economy in the world at that stage. Now, China's yeah. obviously the richest economy in the world. But, yeah, like, that's insane. Crazy. So, that's their media well, driving, you know, what people's perception well, is. Well, so they do say the power of media is um, mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. Really. People tend to believe whatever they, whatever they hear, really. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and I think I think the the power of the media has changed a little bit now with 
just how connected the world Everyone, is with social yeah. media and, and yeah. the fact that we've got cameras on us 24 hours a day and we can, you know, so if, if something's sort of happening, we can be journalists ourselves, I guess, truth tellers to some degree. Mm. Yeah, it's um, a lot easier for, for all other information to get out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Sorry to be the negative one here, but social media also is a way that spreads oh, fake yeah. news very quickly. Very quickly. Yeah. And people don't research it; they will click it on their social media. Go, oh, interesting! I, I didn't know that. Sean and has then, three legs. Yeah, Sean <laughs> has three legs. Oh, what a what a weird guy! <laughs> I didn't actually look further. Actually, read the article. Yeah. And go, oh yeah, that's not real news. Yeah. So yeah. that's a little bit of an issue Wait, too, isn't it? The crazy I've seen as well is. Um, the technology now, they can get videos of very important people. With three legs. With three <laughs> yeah, legs. Yeah, and, yeah. And, um, and make them say something. Obviously, like using different words that they've said mm. in previous interviews or whatever. And then make it as if that they're sitting down wherever that in that video saying what the people have made them want, want to say. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Technology is insane. Mm. Insane. You know, and how some of, like some of that technology, you can't even tell that they, they've edited that. Exactly, so it's yeah, pretty scary. Right. Although, yeah. if we ever post a picture of Nixie's gym progress, hundred percent legitimate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, not, not fabricated <laughs> at all. Yeah, yeah. I might get my, might get a picture of Arnold and <laughs> put my head on it. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how we go. I'm not sure how. We, actually, is Arnold too big? Or was he too big? Yeah, that's well. All those those people are massive, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. That's too. He's big. a freak. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want to be that big. No, it's too much work. Yeah, how much <laughs> you gotta eat? Yeah, yeah. It makes eating not fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm with you. Ah, you know. Yeah, no, I wouldn't want to be that big. So I think we started talking about taking risks. So um, I guess the question is, well, actually, the statement is probably it depends on on what you're risking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. for the experience of going to America, you're probably gonna we we the three of us are gonna take that risk. Yeah. Because of the experience, and we've been there, and we love it, and it's one of the I feel like one of the best countries in the world still, like incredible yeah. place to visit. I'd want to go see friends and yeah, all the people I met over there and that as well. Yeah. So it it makes it worthwhile. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so yeah. if if I think the re, if the reward sort of outweighs the risks, yeah, yeah, you take the risks. I think yeah, it's like anything really as well. You, you know, you calculate the risk, and then you. You kind of you make a plan from that, don't you? Yep. Yeah, I agree. You see a good-looking woman you you like at the bar, the risk of getting rejected versus the reward of going on a date. You know, same thing. <laughs> What's that like? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not something we've experienced. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I might actually uh, put my head on the Sean Turns body. <laughs> <laughs> that might be that might be a better a, a better well, idea. So. I mean, I wonder how this podcast has been, Nixie. Well, I don't know. I missed the first half. So. I <laughs> but um, I wonder what listening to us right now, because obviously people are used to listening to us. Yeah. Me on one side, you on the other side. Yeah. And not in the middle. Not not a, not a unity of, of voices coming through their uh, mm. headphones. Um, so it'll be. It's, I can't wait to hear the feedback. Do you think, like, could be a possibility? Say that we've got someone that listens every single week and their head's been so used to listening to me in their left ear that their left, left ear is going to get withdrawals. <laughs> just not from hearing only my voice. Yeah, it'd be interesting yeah. to see. Like, you could go, this is not right. <laughs> yeah, so like, just... I will never listen to this podcast again. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I mean, I, there's a chance. Yeah. Someone might not. If we lose multiple viewers or listeners, I guess I should say, then we know. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, be sure to let us know. We're um, once again made it here, um, number twenty nine. Uh, hopefully, it was it was good, um, and and we should keep on building. Um, our, our personal schedule, or my personal schedule, will uh, lighten slightly. Um, Mine lightens after next week. After this weekend, so um, hopefully we, um, we can uh, add in some more cool stuff and a little bit more engaging, different. Um, whatnots. Um, keep an eye out for the shirt. The shirt will be posted at some point in time, um, and continue sharing to everyone. Um, the more listeners, the better, um, and we value each and every one of our viewers. Um, yeah, 
And I love that open-ended, the shirt will be at some point in time. <laughs> <laughs> that just gives us some freedom. <laughs> I like exactly. That. No pressure. Yeah. Uh, thank you to the Sean Turn for driving the ship today. I reckon that's a good job. Little golf clap. Good job. Um, again, socials, hashtags. Um, Chirp. Sure.